Hi, hello. My name is Martha Mulera, a biomedical engineer from Uganda who's uh, passionate about improving healthcare delivery in low and middle income settings through provision of appropriate and affordable medical technologies for our settings. I started my career at one of the local companies that deals in the distributorship, repair and maintenance of medical technologies in hospitals across the country. Now, through my interaction with uh, biomedical technicians and clinicians in various hospitals within the country, I observed that, unfortunately, um, our health facilities were ill-equipped, lacking even the most basic of equipment for diagnosis and therapy. And therapy. Um, in addition, uh, most of the available equipment were not made for our environment and terrain. For example, some were very advanced, making them costly, and as such, you could only afford a few here and there. Um, they are not user-friendly, and they are not meant for infrastructure that is marred with unstable hydroelectricity. Now, statistics state that 60% of all donated equipment in sub-Saharan Africa are left unused in spite of the good, uh, good intentions of the donors. As such, we are left with graveyards of medical technologies in our health facilities, and some of the reasons that have been cited for these are things to do with lack of spare parts, lack of consumables, uh, lack of training, because our technical know-how is you know, just being developed in the area of biomedical engineering, and also difficult to use. These were some of the reasons cited for the abandonment. Now, to contribute to solving some of these challenges, I moved to the Instrumentation Division at the Uganda Industrial Research Institute, a government body that is mandated with championing innovation and translation of applied research into practical and viable products. At the Instrumentation Division, our focus is on an embedded system with a huge bias towards medical technologies. We have since designed several technologies with our flagship device, uh, the electronically controlled gravity feed infusion set, ECGF, it's a mouthful. Now the ECGF, like the name suggests, it's a, well, it's gravity controlled and it monitors and regulates infusion IV infusion therapy. Now how does this device fit our environment? One, uh, we've implemented a hybrid charging system, so it can charge in both hydroelectricity power or on solar power. Uh, as such, it can be used in all settings, provided there's some form of uh, power that can be used for charging. The device can run for eight hours continuously without need for charging. That way we can have at least three patients access their IV, require, IV infusion requirements. Uh, we anticipate our device to cost less than 200, approximately $200, which is less than 10% uh, or a tenth of the cost of the infusion controllers and monitors on the market today. Um, we have uh, clinically validated this device in 166 children and 24 adults, and uh, the results found appropriate for clinical use based on our international standards. We are currently uh, implementing version two of the device that is based on um, a user feedback and also our results from the, the field. We hope that this will be on the market very soon. Being the first in-country device to make it to this level, it has encouraged several innovators. I mean, I could mention quite a couple of them, Emscan, uh, Mati Babu, so it has encouraged them not to abandon their rather viable and highly innovative uh, products. We have since taken on the role of offering uh, technical support to most of these innovators, guiding them through the gray regulatory process, the design processes while following uh, international standards since we do not have clear standards yet, and also training them in the good design principles. Uh, based on our experiences with the unclear or grey regulatory pathways and regulatory bodies and policies, we embarked on a journey of engaging, you know, um, key stakeholders uh, to streamline the regulatory process and make the work of an innovator easy easier. You know, uh, we held workshops with key stakeholders such as the National Drug Authority, Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Uganda National Council of Science and Technology, Ministry of Science and Technology, and Ministry of Health.
um, we not only presented to them our findings, but also made propositions on how these regulatory uh, policies and bodies could be streamlined, uh, you know, to ease the innovators' work. We are also in the process of writing uh, white papers on our findings that we believe will further guide policymakers not only in Uganda but also across other regions that have not yet streamlined their regulatory processes. Recently, I have had the honor of working uh, as a country consultant with the medical devices team at the World Health Organization under the leadership of a great lady, um, Adriana Velasquez. I provided technical expertise on innovative technologies, uh, challenges with donated equipment, and uh, towards the development of uh, policy drafts. I provided input in the uh, development of training and maintenance material for oxygen uh, systems in the co for the context of COVID-19, and also contributed to health facility assessment tools also in the context of COVID-19. Uh, some of the pub publications are being put out. The training material has been sent to partner countries, which we believe will help them, you know, improve on um, the, the, you know, oxygen-related equipment and uh, serve the COVID-19 patients better. And overall, it was an enriching experience, and I believe, you know, we did good. I also uh, co-founded um, the manufacturing lead for a startup medical device company, Shishi International, uh, which focuses on assembly of medical technologies still for our settings. The company has two devices so far on the market. We have the OxyLife oxygen splitter, which allows up to five pediatric patients and three adult patients to access oxygen concurrently from the same oxygen source. As we know uh, recently, EFOT has been on uh, providing more oxygen in low resource because we unfortunately have limited oxygen sources. So if we can maximize the number of patients that are accessing oxygen concurrently, then we'll have contributed to solving the challenge. The other device is a uh, phototherapy eye shields for neonates, for you know, uh, child, uh, neonates that are undergoing phototherapy treatment, neonates with jaundice, and they're required to protect their eyes. So we've made phototherapy eye shields that are made from uh, locally available materials. In addition to that, the company does, uh, we carry out training uh, in repair and maintenance of oxygen related equipment. We have previously and still partner with organizations like uh, the Clinton Health Access Initiative, CHAI, to train clinicians and biomedical technicians in the use, uh, repair, and maintenance of oxygen-related equipment. Uh, we also offer consultations with companies looking to clinically validate their equipment in, in, in our country. For example, we are working with Linmet, an American company that has designed the O2 Cube, a solar-powered device that uh, produces oxygen, fills uh, smaller cylinders that can then be used during referral of patients from health centers to regional referrals that, you know, are more advanced to handle some of the severe cases. Now, to further enrich my knowledge and understanding of design and manufacture of uh, medical technologies for our settings, you know, like I mentioned, my goal is to design uh, technologies for our settings. I enrolled for a PhD in biomechanics, biomedical engineering and human movements at the University of Salford in Manchester, UK. My focus is in the design methodologies for low and middle income settings. Finally, uh, if you are to improve accessibility and availability of medical technologies in low and middle income settings, we need to focus on improving in country and regional design and manufacturing capabilities. Thank you very much.